The following is a presentation of the St. Louis Chess Club. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage Executive Director of the St. Louis Chess Club, Tony Rich. Thank you all, and welcome to the opening ceremony of the 2023 U.S. Championship and U.S. Women's Championship. We're also very honored tonight to be able to induct the U.S. Chess Hall of Fame inductees for the class of 2023 tonight. Uh, as the voice overhead just said, my name is Tony Rich and I'm the executive director at the St. Louis Chess Club. It's my privilege to have been able to host and organize every U.S. championship and U.S. women's championship since 2009 right here in St. Louis. And of course, none of that would be possible without the support of players, fans, spectators, donors, staff, vendors, and everybody who makes chess happen, but in particular, Jeannie and Rexingfield. You know, it's funny, I think the U.S. championships are, these events right now, are probably my second favorite event of the year. I like the junior championships, the girls junior, the U.S. senior championships, because I get to meet all the players before they're really, really strong. Um, the U.S. championships and the U.S. women's championships represent the pinnacle of chess in America. These are the very best players that our country has produced and uh, I think we're all very proud. So a round of applause for all of the players. Someone else that should have a lot of pride in her work and in helping grow chess nationally is Dr. Jeannie Karen Sinkfield. It's my pleasure to introduce her now. Jeannie. Welcome to St. Louis. I'm thinking it's like 15 years ago, my husband came up to me with this small idea, let's, he could start a chess club. I mean, how expensive could that be? <laughs> so since then, the chess club and my husband, who I'm going to introduce, has done wonderful things. We've had, I don't know how many, how many, how many years have we had the, uh, the, you, the, the chess championship here? 15 years, not bad for a, nothing. But when we started, it was very little. Chess had not blossomed for a long time in uh, the US. So Rex and I got in this little competition. So I got the Boy Scouts to prove chess is a merit badge. And I just got the number, it's a little over 300,000 Scouts have earned it. And, they, and this, is, this is the best part. They have to play in a tournament, and they have to teach someone else. And then because Rex was doing all this wonderful stuff of finding the best players and bringing them to St. Louis, I decided that I had to work on the audience. So we now have a little booklet that you guys can get for free. It's now available in 13 languages, and it teaches kids literacy. So. I'm a terrible chess player, but I can grow your audience. <laughs> but I, what I really want to do is talk about Rex and his passion for chess. I mean, think about this. There's no reason for St. Louis to be the chess capital of the U.S. and maybe the world, right? And no one had a vision to Think about how could you do this, not only at the highest level, but at the in-between level and growing and growing kids across the country and across the world. So it's my honor to introduce the godfather of American chess, my loving husband, Rex Singfield.
keep playing the music. That way I don't have to speak. <clears throat> well, I want to welcome all of the players to St. Louis, also referred to as the chess capital of the nation. This is always my favorite time of the year when we have the best players in America playing chess. Jeannie and I are delighted to host these prestigious and amazing tournaments. And speaking of amazing, how about this venue? As, you, as some of you probably know, soccer, as we call it here in the colonies, is native uh, to St. Louis only for the last year. But prior to that, going back in the 60s and 70s, and long before that, St. Louis was the soccer capital of the United States. And in fact, in the 1960s, St. Louis University, they had a soccer team there, they still do, but then they were the national champion for 10 years in a row. <clears throat> now, this, uh, <clears throat> a few weeks ago, I, both myself and Carolyn Kendall, who's one of the new owners of the soccer team, were inducted into the St. Louis Sports Hall of Fame. And I have to say it was an honor for both of us to be inducted into that class. <clears throat> so I would first like to recognize Spectrum and Silverback Studios, my son Randy and Kevin DePew, they have very talented teams that create and make the production and broadcast an amazing experience. And uh, we have, of course, our incredible staff with Joy Bray and Tony Rich and all the folks at the World Chess Hall of Fame. They are the ones that make all of this happen. Um, this year we have moved the new, the old chess studios to a new location, and I think everyone will love the online broadcast. Anchoring the broadcast are people you're used to. Grandmaster Yasser Serawan, Women's Grandmaster Katerina Nemsova, and Grandmaster Christian Chirilla. <laughs> so if we get a broadcast team that strong, we believe it causes the players to have to strive to reach that level. Now, on behalf of the Chess Club and the Board of Directors, the St. Louis Club remains committed to our mission of creating a world-class venue for players from across the globe to enjoy. And we will do everything in our power to continue to make the tangible, meaningful changes that foster an equitable environment and help the St. Louis Club be the safe and best place in the world to play chess. Thank you. Thank you, Rex. U.S. Chess is the governing body for chess in America. Uh, the organization is responsible for things like ratings for American players, for fielding the teams that go to the Olympiads, for hosting things like the U.S. Open that actually qualifies into the U.S. Championship. Um, in addition to that, U.S. Chess is the, is the thought leader in chess in America. One of the things I think I like most um, in attending the delegates' meetings is just how grassroots the approach can be. U.S. Chess does an amazing job of really bringing together volunteers and folks from across the country, starting chess clubs, running tournaments, running programs in schools, um, and one day maybe becoming grandmasters and playing right here in St. Louis. Uh, the executive director of U.S. Chess is Carol Meyer, and Carol's been a great partner in chess uh, through the years as we've worked these U.S. championships, and it's my pleasure now to introduce Carol. Good evening, everyone. I'd, I'd like to add my welcome to everyone and especially congratulate all the players for qualifying for this year's championships. Did you know that the, the modern U.S. championship is in its 67th instantiation and the women's championship is in its 63rd? I had no idea that we had a women's championship that long. The St. Louis Chess Club has hosted the last 15 U.S. championships, elevating the prestige of these premier events, and you, the players, are the best U.S. chess has to offer, and we're proud to see you here. Over the next two weeks, we celebrate that U.S. chess and the St. Louis Chess Club do what we do best. 
We are committed to creating a welcoming and safe environment for all, be they one of the top players or the casual chess fan. Since the championships came to St. Louis in 2009, we have learned that we have learned more than anything, we want what is best for the game and for the people who make up our chess community. And I'm proud that U.S. Chess is able to partner with the St. Louis Chess Club as leaders in the chess world. The hub of chess in the United States is St. Louis, now home to U.S. Chess. We're grateful to Dr. Jeannie and Rex Singfield for their unprecedented support for the game and its players. And on behalf of the U.S. chess community, we thank you. The team on the, US, on, the, on the chess campus is unrivaled anywhere, and I would like to offer my thanks to Tony, Joy, Shannon, and Emily, and others for everything you do for the game. And so, thank you. And so all the, all the players, may your moves be good this next couple of weeks, and I wish you only success as you compete during the event. Thank you. And as Carol said, it really is a village that uh, produces all of these things here in St. Louis. Uh, one of the folks who helps make uh, chess great in St. Louis is Emily Allred, and she's the assistant curator at the World Chess Hall of Fame. Emily? Hi. So on behalf of the World Chess Hall of Fame, I'm happy to welcome you all to the 2023 U.S. Chess Hall of Fame inductions. Through our mission, we celebrate the rich history and culture of the game of chess. We are currently hosting two exhibitions exploring these topics. The first, Sound Moves, explores how music has inspired chess players, as well as how the game has in influenced musicians across genres. The second, T.S. Eliot, A Game of Chess, explores how one of Missouri's best known writers and poets explored the game in his landmark poem, The Wasteland. I hope you all will have a chance to enjoy these exhibitions while you're in St. Louis. Um, these would not have been possible without the generous support of Dr. Jeannie Karen Sinkfield and Rex Sinkfield, who make all of our shows possible. Um, we are also grateful to our wonderful staff for all of the work that they do to create these exhibitions. Every year, the World Chess Hall of Fame celebrates the players, writers, and other figures whose actions have changed the game of chess during the U.S. Chess Hall of Fame inductions. These have been held since 1986 and have now been in St. Louis for many years. Each year, the United States Chess Federation Recognitions Committee selects candidates for induction, and the U.S. Chess Trust confirms the nominees. We are honored to recognize the achievements of Lisa Lane, William Shinkman, and Yuri Shulman as history is about to be made at the championships right here in St. Louis. Um, Sunil Wiramantri, the U.S. Chess Trust Vice President for Scholastic Chess and the Executive Director of the Nas National Scholastic Chess Foundation, will be conducting this year's inductions. Please welcome Sunil to the stage. Good evening, everyone. The U.S. Chess Hall of Fame and World Chess Hall of Fame are both housed in a beautiful museum located in the central west end of St. Louis. The partnership between St. Louis and the U.S. Chess Trust dates back to 2011. Prior to that, the Hall of Fame had been housed in New Windsor, New York, Washington, D.C., and Miami, Florida. My fellow trustees would wholeheartedly agree that both halls of fame have found a permanent home here in St. Louis. And we are grateful to Rex and Jeannie Singfield for having made it happen. In the audience today are three other trustees, President WIM Beatrice Marinello. Beatrice, are you there? <laughs> Secretary Alexander Kerford. Alex, and Trustee Rex Singfield. Thank you for being here. As the liaison from the Trust to the Hall of Fame, it is my pleasure and privilege today 
to induct the class of 2023 to the U.S. Chess Hall of Fame. We have three new inductees. Our first inductee is former U.S. women's champion Lisa Lane. Ms. Lane was unfortunately not able to join us today. Her plaque reads as follows. Lisa Lane is a pioneer in the development of women's chess in the United States. A latecomer to the game who only started playing in her late teens, Lane made rapid progress and within two years of learning the rules, had earned the title of expert and won the 1959 U.S. Women's Championship. She would go on to represent the United States in two women's interzonals, a women's Olympiad, and win another U.S. Women's Championship, tying for first with Giselle Aggressor in 1966. Lane's accomplishments attracted media attention to the game, and she was the first chess figure to appear on the cover of Sports Illustrated in August of 1961. And so with the authority vested in me, I hereby induct Lisa Lane to the U.S. Chess Hall of Fame. Our next inductee is William Schinkman, who is being honored posthumously. His plaque reads as follows. William Schinkman ranks among the greatest problem composers in chess history. He composed over 3,500 problems on a variety of themes in a career stretching over six decades, earning the nickname the Wizard of Grand Rapids. Schinkman began his activity in the golden age of problem solving in the last half of the 19th century, when daily newspapers all carried all over the United States had chess columns. These columns invariably included composed problems to solve, many of them Schinkman's. Besides being a giant in the field of problem solving, Schinkman was also influential in the development of chess puzzles. And so with the authority invested in me, I hereby induct William Schinkman to the U.S. Chess Hall of Fame. I almost hit on the glass. <laughs> Our third inductee is Grandmaster Yuri Shulman, who is here with us today. His plaque reads as follows. Yuri Shulman's record in U.S. Chess Championships is notable for both its excellence and consistency. Shulman played in nine of these events after moving to the United States from his native Belarus, where he was national champion in 1994 and European junior champion the following year. Shulman won the U.S. championship in 2008, finished second in 2006, 2010, and 2011, tied for third in 2005 and 2007, and shared fourth in 2004 and 2012. His lifetime winning percentage of 61.5% in these events is among the best ever. Schumann represented the United States in two Olympiads, winning team bronze in 2008, and in two World Team Championships, winning team silver in 2011. And so with the authority invested in me, I hereby induct Grandmaster Yuri Shulman to the U.S. Chess Hall of Fame. I would now like to invite Grandmaster Shulman to the stage for some words. Grandmaster Shulman. Thank you, Shunil. Thanks, everyone. Uh, when I was told that I would be delivering a speech today, I uh, thought that what can I uh, say something new to you guys? I cannot help to uh, solve the, all the conflicts in the world, like you know, all the wars which are happening right now and which we really feel sad about. Um, I cannot definitely help to most of you who are here, like 
to become better chess players since you're much better than I have ever been. Though like Sunil was talking for a while that I was winning something. Uh, but then I was thinking about like, what is chess for us? Uh, uh, and uh, uh, like I talked recently with my friends and uh, I realized we always recall some wonderful moments we had in chess. And I would like to recall some uh, moments from my life and um, hopefully from some uh, people who are present here. And uh, some of us are present here, some of us are uh, like my friends support me and uh, even my dad right now I think is working and subbing me at the chess club uh, which we are running in, back in Chicago. And uh, I would like uh, also to recall people who are not with us anymore and especially my mom who uh, when I was five years old, uh, she was walk uh, we were walking together to the uh, kindergarten, and she notices that Yuri somehow is not walking straight forward. So, like, what's happened to him? And then she noticed I tried to move like a knight, or I tried to move like a bishop. She says, to my father, who is, by the way, grandmaster in checkers, she says, probably it's uh, already time to, for him to switch the activity. And uh, my dad started teaching me how to play chess. Maybe he did it before since I knew some piece movement. But um, I always remember how um, they also came to some chess tournaments, to the chess, uh, US chess championships. Uh, they came once and I was not doing so well. And still, Sunil, that was one of the tournaments you mentioned. So I took second place there. <laughs> so, uh, and really, and I'm thankful to my friends as well, not, um, who also supported me in var various in events. Um, I'm also recalling the moment uh, with, uh, how, like how we were studying with Sam Shankland, who if he didn't give you a book today yet, uh, then probably he would at some point. But the funny thing, I was dreaming to get that book because uh, uh, like me and Sam were studying uh, uh, numerous about of Rukan games and constantly were beating each other in the puzzle why to play and win with black pieces. And, and Sam, it looks like you really learned from that so much how to play chess. You're an amazing player and also amazing author now. Uh, and I also only learned from you how to cook sushi and uh, spring rolls, but I still remember it. Uh, I remember Ray Robson, how you, uh, like, probably the only person who I had to escape from studying chess because he would wake up in the morning at 7 and, uh, and right away he would just uh, drag me to the chessboard and we would be really playing for until probably midnight. So the longest time I ever played chess was with Ray Robson. Uh, and um, I remember the quickest move, Wesley, and me and Katerina at the Chess Olympiad in uh, Tromsø, and Wesley made the quickest move, and he jumped into 50 degrees water in the uh, uh, Arctic Ocean. And the way he jumped out was probably the most impressive thing I've ever seen. In here. Uh, so really, really, uh, I also uh, uh, met today Sam Savian again, who played his uh, first chess championship uh, when I played my last. We played the game. He was still young and growing talent, and it was really amazing to, to see how he progressed after that, and it was a very memorable game to play with Sam. Um, uh, Rex and uh, Jenny, you think I would recall US championships as the most impressive? No way. My most impressive uh, uh, memory with you was when you were teaching me those Milky Way uh, 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 galaxies. Yeah, Rex really was taking time to explain how beautiful they are and uh, where they are supposed to be. And it, it was a great chess camp we had uh, here at, um, uh, like when we prepared for Turkey Olympiad. I also would say that uh, um, I would recall uh, wonderful memories with my uh, coaches, with Tamara uh, Golovey, who just uh, turned 80 years old this year. And remember how one of the first Simul show organized, one of his students came over and wanted to play with us, with young kids. And I was so scared that I hid under the table uh, with her daughter. So we, I don't know why we were so scared, but <laughs> that was our uh, first reaction. And, uh, and I see some of uh, my students here who are present, my friends who are present here and who are supporting me. But I also would like to say that um, not only you want to be at the right place and the right time, but also you have to be 
uh, with the right person. So it's interesting, when I was playing chess uh, and uh, keep on accumulating all those titles, um, I didn't get awarded uh, uh, the Hall of uh, Fame uh, uh, inductee. But when my wife Tanya uh, came with me, of course, right away, you know, she, she was able to help me to get inducted. And we recalled recently <laughs> a, a joke of uh, Michelle Obama and uh, Barack Obama when he was asked and uh, like, they met one of their friends and he asked, oh, you, you were planning today that guy, right? So like, where, where would you end up today? And she said, I don't know where I would end, uh, end up. Uh, where would, would you end up? But I would be still a wife of a president, right? So. <laughs> So, and definitely, uh, we want to make sure that, yeah, we really appreciate uh, the people who are uh, with us, and we really appreciate our um, uh, memories in chess, uh, and uh, I, I, I really appreciate all the experience, and I, I'm so happy to come back here and uh, also to see some uh, uh, young players, uh, eternally young players participating in addition to like, at least, like, you're a very young player, but definitely Tatev, uh, Irina, Anna, you uh, absolutely always eternally young. You all, always will be playing this tournament. Very happy to see you here, and I really uh, uh, feel how um, much uh, desire you have in playing chess and how much enjoyment you get. So, guys, I'm not going to delay your uh, desire to play your chess tournament tomorrow. Just wish you good luck tomorrow and have a wonderful U.S. championship. And thanks to everyone to, for listening to me. Thank you. I still remember hanging out with Yuri at the Olympiads and watching him give a simul. There used to be a restaurant in St. Louis called Herbie's. And come on. Yeah. Tony just re really looks like a serious person. But another amazing memory I had is a competition, um, a balloon blowing competition at the Istanbul Olympiad. <laughs> Guys, you would not, you would need to see it. What, guess who took first, second, and third place in that competition? Tatiev, you might remember, right? You, you'll not cheat. Guys, the, when the first ba balloon was blown off, then second and third places, like, were still very clearly, um, uh, we were still competing, but Tony got first, second, and third place, guys. <laughs> so I'm not going to talk anymore. Thank Tony, you. thank you, sorry. <laughs> I had to share it. Well, I'll keep my story a secret. No. <laughs> Thank you, Yuri. Thanks. Now we're on to the part of the evening where we do the drawing of lots. This is what the players, I think, really care about. It's the reason they're here, also because they're contractually obligated to be here for this part. Uh, so the drawing of lots is the method by which we determine uh, who will play whom in which round. So the, both tournaments are a round-robin format, meaning everybody will play everybody in their sections, and they will draw pairing numbers 1 through 12, and that will determine their pairing order. <laughs> to assist me in drawing the pairing of lots, I have the arbiters from the U.S. Championship and U.S. Women's Championship. Starting off, we have Frank Guadalupe, who's the chief arbiter for U.S. Championship. Frank, if you could come on up. Chris Bird, who is the chief arbiter of the U.S. Women's Championship. And Karen Pennock, who is the deputy arbiter for all of it. We will start with the U.S. Women's Championship field, and to lead us off, we have the reigning U.S. Women's Champion, Jennifer Yu. So Jennifer's going to draw a scarf over here, St. Louis soccer. Oh, I'm sorry, women's side. I did this last time at the Junior Champs, too, guys. Doesn't get better. Okay, so Jennifer's going to choose a scarf, uh, St. Louis City that has a pairing number on it, and she has pairing number five. Next up, Grandmaster Irina Crush. <laughs> Irina draws a scarf and chooses pairing number. 
I didn't see. Number four. Next up, we have young Alice Lee. Alice picks her scarf, and she has pairing number six. International master, Carissa Yip. Pairing number nine. Next up is International Master Anna Zatonsky. And Anna chooses pairing number two. Next up is Golruk Begim Tokir Nova, or Begim. Begum chooses pairing number seven. Next is international master Nazi Pagizzi. Nazi picks a scarf and has pairing number one. Next up, debuting her first U.S. Women's Championship, Atusa Porkishian. And Atusa draws pairing number 11. Next, Tate Barbahamian. Tatev has pairing number eight. Next is St. Louis's own Talia Cervantes. Pairing number 10. Next up is Ashritha Eswaran. Pairing number 12. And just to keep us honest, last but not least, Ru Yang Yan. And Ru Yang has pairing number three. Okay, we'll move on to the U.S. Championship field, and we will start with the reigning U.S. Champion, Grandmaster Fabiano Caruana. Pairing number 12. Get it out of the way for everybody else, you know. Next up, Wesley So. Wesley chooses, flips it over, has pairing number six. Another St. Louis resident, Grandmaster Livon Aronian. Livon has pairing number one. Another St. Louis, and I mean, you can't swing a dead cat without hitting a Grandmaster around here. We have Lenier Dominguez. Pairing number seven. Next up, Sam Sevian.
same as pairing number nine. Another St. Louis in, Grandmaster Ray Robson. Ray has number four. Next, Jeffrey Zhang. Jeffrey draws. Pairing number two. The author himself, Grandmaster Sam Shanklin. Pairing number 10. Next up is Grandmaster Hans Niemann. Is pairing number five. Another St. Louis and Grandmaster Darius Schwirtz. Darrow has pairing number eight. Next up, Grandmaster Abhimayo Mishra. And Abhi has pairing number 11. And last but of course not least, Grandmaster who won the U.S. Open to qualify for the U.S. Championship this year, Andrew Tang. Sorry, number seven, thank you. Okay, so now I'm gonna announce round one pairings. Let me just grab those from our arbiters, one moment. All right, he asked if I can read it, and I said yes without looking, so. In the US Championship round one, we have Grandmaster Levon Aronian versus Fabiano Caruana, Jeffrey Zhang versus Abhimayo Mishra, Andrew Tang versus Sam Shanklin, Ray Robson versus Sam Sevian, Hans Neiman versus Darius Sviertz, Wesley So versus Lenier Dominguez. And in the U.S. Women's Championship field, we have Nazi Pagiti against Ashrita Eswaran, Anna Zatonsky versus Atusa Porkishian, Ruya Yan versus Talia Cervantes, Irina Krush versus Carissa Yip, Jennifer Yu versus Tatev Abrahamian, and Alice Lee versus Begum Tokirnova. So those are our pairings for round one. Don't forget, you can find all of the action at uschesschamps.com. So we'll stream all of the games there live. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, on a 30-minute delay. Uh, we also stream our commentary, and you can find the standings and the pairings. You can see our, our bios for all of the players as well. It's a great place for information about these folks. So, I mean, the championships are the pinnacle of chess in St. Louis, and it's really exciting to have everybody back here now, including all of you. I hope you're able to stay around and enjoy some of the action while the players compete across the board. Make sure to tune in every day. The show will begin at 1.20 p.m. at uschesschamps.com. Thank you all and have a great night. This has been a presentation of the St. Louis Chess Club. Any reproduction or distribution of this content without the express written consent of the St. Louis Chess Club is prohibited.